Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of an FNA of a reactive lymph node. We are looking at the air dried smear, and this particular smear is stained with the hemocolor stain. At low magnification, we can appreciate that there are some tissue fragments, and in many areas, there is actually a more dispersed population of discohesive cells. Let's look at the discohesive cells. In this area, we are looking at a mixed lymphoid population. The predominant cell size is small, and this is mixed with some medium-sized and some scattered larger, more activated lymphoid cells. Let's move around a bit more. It is important to evaluate the population because if we are looking at a mixed lymphoid population, in particular one that predominantly is composed of small lymphocytes, as we see here, then it is more likely to be a reactive lymph node. I also want to highlight the presence of lymphoglandular bodies, as you can see here and here, as well as a few smaller ones here surrounding the lymphoid cells. These are a very useful indicator that we are dealing with a lymphoid lesion. They do not differentiate between reactive or benign lymphoid cells versus malignant lymphoid cells, but they are a good indicator that we are likely dealing with a lymphoid lesion. So we have a mixed lymphoid population. And now let's have a look at some of the tissue fragments. So these tend to be quite thick and it would be useful to actually focus up and down using the microscope. But in this instance, we are not able to do that. So let's look at the edges of these tissue fragments. And this is where you will have a good clue as to the type of the cells. We can see that the edges are not very sharply demarcated. In fact, they look somewhat frayed and loose. And if you look closely, at the edges, the cells are actually exactly the same as the dispersed lymphoid population. So this tells us that we are actually looking at lymphoid aggregates rather than cohesive sheets of malignant epithelial cells. So it would be important to examine all the tissue fragments in case there are some epithelial cells hiding amongst them. And again, we can see that these are all actually made up of lymphoid cells. The most common scenario in which we will see these cohesive appearing lymphoid aggregates is when we are looking at germinal centers. Sometimes they are also known as lymphohistiocytic aggregates. And usually in these aggregates, we will see perhaps a larger number of large lymphoid cells because these are found normally in the germinal centers. And let me just move to this area where we can see a couple of tingible body macrophages here and here. And again, this is commonly seen in reactive lymph nodes and also in germinal centers. Tingible body macrophages are not exclusive to reactive lymphoid lesions. They can also be seen in malignancies. And in particular, in Burkitt lymphoma, we can see lots of tingible body macrophages. This is the corresponding alcohol fixed smear that was stained with the papanicular stain. And again, we can see dispersed lymphocytes and these tissue fragments, which on closer inspection are very clearly lymphoid in nature. So again, the edges are relatively frayed and loose. And also the cells are the same size and appearance as the lymphoid cells in the background. And again, we can see that the population of lymphocytes is predominantly small with occasional medium-sized cells and then scattered larger, more activated lymphoid cells. In this area, we can see a tingible body macrophage. And as we move to this aggregate here, again, we can see a few scattered tingible body macrophages. So we are probably dealing with a germinal center here. And here we are just going to focus up and down, looking at the germinal center material. We can very readily 
make out the gingival body macrophages. And again, as mentioned, there are more larger activated lymphoid cells in germinal centers, so we shouldn't be alarmed by this appearance. Here we can also see a follicular dendritic cell, which usually appears as a binucleated cell, and the nuclei have very small nucleoli. There is another example here, where we have the oval nuclei with small nucleoli. And we can see in this germinal center that there are larger numbers of large activated lymphoid cells. Hence, in summary, this is a reactive lymph node in which we can see a mixed lymphoid population that is composed predominantly of small lymphocytes. And we can also see some lymphoid aggregates within which we can see tingible body macrophages. In a lymph node aspirate, it would also be useful to look out for necrosis or granulomatous inflammation because infections such as TB can often occur in lymph nodes and give rise to lymph adenopathy. I would also like to invite you to check out our free online pathology resource, PathWeb. And in this resource, we also have a virtual pathology museum with 1,000 fully interactive and annotated virtual pathology specimens, and this is completely free. The registration link is in the video description. Thank you.